everybody. Welcome back to uh, another episode here of Ox Fiends. Um, today we're looking at another album. Um, I got my co-host here, Mateo, as well, always. Mateo, hey. how you doing? Hey, 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 doing good. Just listen to albums as usual. How are you, Rashab? I'm good. I enjoyed our session of fiending on the last episode where oh, yeah. things got a little intense. A little heated? Are they going to get more intense this episode? Who We're going to have to Maybe find they'll out. mellow out. You guys have to listen to find out. We got to listen to find out. And so today, if you, you probably already know if you've clicked on this episode, but we are looking at the album A Moon Shaped Pool from Radiohead. So this is their album that came out in 2016. Um, and as always, I'm just going to go ahead and provide a little bit of background, and then we'll talk with Mateo about what he had in terms of like, expectations for the album. Um, so I think we can just get right into it. So I'm going to be reading a little bit from the Spotify bio and Wikipedia bio for Radiohead. I think the, this is a much older out, older kind of artist compared to someone like you know Chuck Pearson or Lord that we've been talking about <laughs> before. Um, so pretty much... These guys, they, they've been compared to David Bowie, Pink Floyd, uh, the Talking Heads even. Um, but they came out pretty much, I believe, in the 90s. So, yeah, they had their sort of first big uh, track in 91. And their debut single was called Creep. It was on their debut album and called Pablo Honey. And that was in 1993. So, yeah, really early, early 90s. Um, the band consists of Tom York. Johnny Greenwood, Colin Greenwood, Ed O'Brien, and Philip Selway. Um, again, sort of the artists that I already mentioned, those are the ones that they've been compared to the most. Um, and they've basically been very famous for for doing a lot of experimental rock uh, music. And they generally have been known for doing themes that are sort of a little bit different from what might be considered mainstream rock. And certainly their style and execution of everything is very... Um, experimental, I, like just looking at the genre list here, it says art rock, alternative rock, even electronica, and then of course um, experimental rock. Um, so this is Radiohead's actually latest album. Uh, this one came out as I said in 2016. I believe it's, I don't remember like exactly what number in it is. And maybe it's like their eighth or ninth, maybe even, maybe somewhere in that vicinity. I don't remember exactly, but it's, um, obviously way down their discography. This is like the last album that they've done. Um, so they, they've been around for a while and they've been producing pretty consistently uh, since since they started and up till now. They were also indoctrinated into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, and then this album specifically, A Moon Shaped Pool, um, this has been said to be a little bit about Tom York, who's the lead singer, um, his split from his uh, then partner. So there is some of that theme in this album, too. And I think it's sort of interesting to look at um, this band and some of their latest work. So before I get into how I kind of learned about this band or why I was interested in reviewing this album, let's talk to Matteo real quick about what he knew of this band, what he thinks of the genre, maybe. Um, just when I say experimental rock, what are some of the names you think think of? And then I'm also going to ask you about some of those comparisons I made, because I know you might... If you're not familiar with Radiohead, I'm sure either you or some of our listeners are definitely familiar with someone like the likes of David Bowie or Talking Heads or Pink Floyd. So, Mateo, the floor is all yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the great introduction, Rashab. Um, I, like anyone else, I, I knew, like, Creep and a couple other, like, top Radiohead songs. I had never heard of this album. I didn't even know it existed, to be honest. Yeah. I didn't know any song off of it. I am not a Radiohead fan previously. I'm not spoiling anything yet. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't a fan previously. I, I honestly, I mean, the people you mentioned, like Talking Heads, Pink Floyd, um, David mm -hmm. Bowie and stuff like that, I, I honestly hasn't been my style. I mean, sure, maybe there's like one, uh, one song couple, but like usually that that's just not usually the way uh, I, I personally lean into. And, mm -hmm. and, and so I guess kind of the, the genre as a whole, if you kind of loop all these guys in and Radiohead as a whole, uh, I, I guess I'm fairly new to it, and mm. you know, it was definitely an experience listening to this stuff. Not the, not to spoil anything, not but, to spoil uh, anything, but I, I, I'd say I was, I was completely uh, brand new, brand new ears, you know, coming in and listening to this. And, yeah. and I, I do want to say that as soon as we get to the first kind of track, or maybe first two, you, you'll you'll see I, no spoilers again. I'm leaning 
very hard in one direction. I'm either really liking it or really disliking it. And that's all, all I'll right. say, and I'll push it back to you and kind of your history with Radiohead. Yeah, so for me, uh, I know I mentioned this a little bit on the last episode. It's uh, my knowledge of Radiohead, I think, and, and how I remember it is I began with the um, album Anima. Um, and Anima was in was like a solo project album that was done by the lead singer Tom York. Um, and of course, I'd heard of Tom York sort of in the periphery because he's been sort of involved in um, music for films, like the latest Suspiria movie. I know he did the music for that. And there's something about Radiohead, and and I'll talk about this as we go by the track, you know, down the tracks too, is they've sort of always been um, strangely involved in the world of cinema. So I think somewhere in there, you know, through the films where I'd heard their songs or or plus with Anima, which also had a short film that went with it, there was a lot of things that were kind of coalescing in that sense. Um, but most of my exposure, again, comes from Anima. So I had listened to a little bit of a moon-shaped pool um, just in terms of when I was looking for more albums to do on Oxfiends. And in general, I was always wanting to kind of get into Radiohead and learn more about their sound and, and see what I think of it and how it compares to an album like Anima. Um so we'll talk about my opinion on everything now, but so I'm almost I'm almost on the same level as you, Mateo, really, where okay. I, in the sense of Radiohead. I mean, I I think yeah. I've heard, and I'm sure you have also. You've heard at least the major tracks from you know Bowie and Floyd and and uh, even Talking Heads. I, I know yeah, I personally I I like Talking Heads and, and sort of the vibe that all those artists bring. Another, those are all cool artists, by the way, for future albums. So, mm-hmm. letting you know, Matea, that that's something you can suggest or something I can suggest in the future. I don't future. know. Uh, maybe well, I don't know if I'll suggest them, but we'll see. Uh, we'll, see. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll, you, you'll see when we get to the whole album review and we get track by track. We'll see. Um, or maybe they will. Maybe I will. Uh, you know, pick them. Yeah. Mm, we'll see. That's all I can say. We will find out. So I think I think it's time we can get into the tracks then. Um, Matteo. Let's start off with Burn the Witch, which is the first track here on mm-hmm. the album. Uh, what did you think of this track? Go ahead. Um, so, so I guess this was my kind of first real, real introduction to Radiohead and stuff, I'd say, other than the mm-hmm. top hits. So overall, I this is definitely a top half song for me. I thought there was really nice vocals in it. it to me, it was kind mm-hmm. of a build-up song. It, and I, I don't know if you ever played the game... Death Stranding it just kind of came out maybe in the past two years on it. PS4. Video, Kojima. Yeah, yeah, game. Kojima, yes, yeah. Of course. But um, in the soundtrack, just kind of when you're walking around and stuff, it's kind of not the interlude, but just kind of the, the music that just kind of goes in in the background because yeah. you're in a big scenic scape of like the mountains and stuff. And like it honestly just reminded me exactly of the music I'd be hearing while playing that game and stuff. Just mm-hmm. kind of. You know, slow at some points, but then amping up a little bit, and the same kind of instruments and same kind of melodic vocals and stuff like that. Um, sure, yeah. I, I I like the instrument kind of disarray towards the end. I don't know if you kind of felt that. Um, I, mm-hmm. yeah, again, I think good overall intro, and I definitely kind of understand why they picked it. But uh, I think that kind of leaves that for uh, that. You know, yeah, for I, I I agree with you, actually. I think it's a pretty solid intro. Again, also me kind of delving into Radiohead. I mean, I, I as I said, I'm slightly familiar with Tom York's solo work, but uh, this is something that I enjoyed. It was a solid opening track. It's, I would, I don't know if you'd agree, Mateo, it's very sort of rock influence, I would say. Mm-hmm. And we'll, we'll talk about the sort of different instrumentation in the album. I think with this album, I think there, there's going to be a lot of just being very specific about certain tracks, even for me. So yeah, I would say it's a really lively, loud rock song. It almost sounds sort of like Linkin Park-esque to me. I, I don't know if uh, I would go as far as making that I'd full comparison, but that, it, no. it, I think it's more just like the the specific rock sound that it's bringing. I would say it, it parallels Linkin Park in some ways for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but the cool thing, and then this is sort of something that ties into the whole album, is that this is the first time we kind of get the taste of the string instrumentation that's you know all throughout this album and used, yeah. in my opinion, absolutely wonderfully in most places. Um, so this is a really just if you like loud experimental rock, but it, it sort of also has this melodic quality to it. I think this is a, a solid opening um, and a solid song to check out. Um, and of course, we have to talk about Tom York's uh, just singing in general. Um, I think, you know, that's something that'll come down to a track per track basis. I think his voice suits certain tracks better than mm-hmm. other tracks. But I think he was 
from what I can remember, I, you know, I think he was good and well suited for this track in, in this case. Um, and I think uh, one interesting thing about Tom York's voice that I've always found interesting is that his there's sort of this clarity in the quality of his voice, but he also does this very mumble singing type yeah. thing most of the time. Um, so it, it works in some places and some places it doesn't. It but definitely doesn't work in some places. Yeah, and I think yeah. I just I don't know I just like the clarity that he has in his like actual voice texture more than necessarily his singing style. Uh, but we'll get into that as we go on to the next few tracks. But for me, this was a good, solid opener. I think it's a good opening track, good first track. Yeah, oh, one last thing. I, I, I'd say this is actually, um, I'd probably say it was kind of easy to pick my favorite song. It wasn't my favorite. It was just maybe top, it was like my second favorite, I, I, I guess. O- okay. Overall, I, I, I was close to that, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. I wouldn't. I don't know if I would go as far as saying that, but um, it's up there for me, too. I enjoy this one. It's I, good. I think. When we talk about the tracks later on, you'll find why this was maybe one of my only favorites up there. Mm-hmm. But, but, but we can keep going to uh, track two, if that's all you got to say about track one. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it for track one. Uh, track two is Daydreaming. I'll start off on this one. Mm-hmm. I think this is one of their most interesting tracks. And I'll be honest, Mateo, I personally have had a very hard time picking a best and worst not necessarily tying into my whole review of the album, but it was just sort of difficult for me for this one. But I will pick one, so don't worry. <laughs> Mateo's always worried that I'm, I'm won't always pick worried. The worst. I'm worried, I'm worried but, you're gonna forget or won't pick. Uh, we'll get there. We'll get there. I'll say okay. that. I, I'm gonna leave my best and worst for the end when I review the entire album. I think it's, it's safe to say that. Yeah. Okay. Um, but let's talk about Daydreaming. I feel like I just need to talk about these tracks once all the way through to really pick a best and worst that I feel confident about. But okay, that's fair. Let's, let's go back to Daydreaming. Uh, yeah, again, Daydreaming. as I said, one of the more definitely interesting tracks on the album. Again, we got to talk about spacey noise. You know, that's one of the biggest things about their sound. And uh, I like it. I, I like most of the time where, where they use that sort of spacey noise. Because what I, what I like about Radiohead that I've discovered in this album is that even when they're using sort of spacey noise or, or a uh, psychedelic sound, there is a solid run through of just real instrumentation, whether that be strings or percussion, they always kind of ground it in that place. Um, for me again, though it comes down to Tom York's uh, voice here, I feel like it sounds okay, but sometimes I've noticed the instrumentation can kind of, eat away at his voice if that makes any sense and and sometimes like the staticness of his voice really doesn't work i think in this one it was still not too bad but it comes up in waves for me um in general i'd say you know he was fine in this song um and then just talking about like volume i think you know something that daydreaming does and and a lot of these songs do is the more than anything else, rather than tonality or anything, it, there's a strong use of just like differences in volume. I don't know if you picked up on that, Mateo. Yeah, I did actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's sort of their style. I almost would say is that they really pick up the volume. Even when you talk about something like "Burn the Witch," there's just like at the end. I think what you were referring to is just like it gets louder and louder and builds up to this sort of crescendo moment. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting. But uh, Daydreaming is easily also one of their most like cinematic songs. Um, I love how it sounds. I like how it sounds almost like a Hans Zimmer score. It has like these really beautiful violin flourishes. I just love the string instrumentation. I love the piano that's used here. It's used really well with the spacey noises. Um, there's even chimes. I, I just like, in the best of their songs, I've noticed that they really use that spacey vibe and fill it really just inventively and intelligently with a lot of great instrumentations. Daydreaming is definitely up there for me, too. Uh, Mateo, what did you think? Yeah, so actually, I, I, before I even jump into what I had written down and thought of, I, I, I got to point out the specific word you use, cinematic, which yeah. actually, I completely agree, not just for this song, but kind of almost the whole all, album, the, whole album the, entire, yep. the entire track list, where I'm just almost yeah. like, I feel every single track almost would work not even saying my actual feelings on the song, but I think they would work very well just in either a music video or just as a soundtrack or backdrop Definitely. to either a movie yeah. or a game or just something else. Like, it really just kind of immerses you in a different kind of world entirely. Exactly. And I, I really felt like I was kind of, like, in the Radiohead world while listening to this this album. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah, but to, to go back to Daydreaming, 
Um, <laughs> that was funny at first. It almost sounded like I don't know if you ever had the Wii, but it sounded like a Wii loading screen at first, <laughs> just for like the first couple like ten seconds or something. I was just like, what? And, and yeah. then it was kind of funny, just because I thought not the Wii screen, but just kind of that kind of theme of almost video yeah. game, and to go back with the soundtrack actually yeah. kept going, and it felt like it, it was kind of the backtrack. Again, to the game or a movie, you know, someone's kind of discovered, it was like a discovery kind of song, almost, at least for the first kind of parts of it. But now, mm -hmm. I'm going to get to my real thoughts, and you're going to start seeing this for the rest of the tracks. Oh boy. I thought this was way too slow for my taste, for Rashad. Really? I... This was... Okay, go ahead. This was the longest song, too, I'll give it that, but I was over it by the end. I'm being honest. You know, I'm surprised you burned out so fast. It's such a long album. The album I, clocks in about like 52 minutes, yeah, and yeah, we're only on the second track. Uh, I, I it's mean, a long song, though. I'll give you that. It is yeah, long. yeah. It's, For it's this six minutes, song, 24 say, seconds. So, I definitely I, I noted when I burn out later, but mm -hmm. um, this song to me just kind of went on too long. I, I I think not to say it even necessarily dragged, but I. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you heard this, but I feel like towards the end, I heard it, different kind of instruments. At first I thought it was vocals, but it was instruments that almost sounded like snoring and stuff. I don't yeah. know if it was like a viola or something like that, but just kind of just yeah, back yeah. and forth. It almost seemed, seemed like a great beast or something. It was just like going <laughs> to rest or something, you know, but... <laughs> yeah, they, they use a little bit of like a... Like it sounds like snoring and sawing at the end, which is yeah. like this very experimental flourish that they have at the end. I didn't mind it. I think it adds a cool little dimension to it, but I can kind of understand why someone might yeah. be like, or oh, ne nearing the end of the song, and now they're going to you know, do this little gimmick at the end. I, I get that opinion, and I I don't want to say I agree because I, I, I think it sounds fine within the song. Um, but yeah, I know no, where you're coming I mean, from. I, I'm not against it, and I think that, I guess that was kind of creative, but I just thought it was a funny point, just to point out. Just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. At, at least just for this song, I was over it. I, I was I was so on logs, too, with the vocals and, yeah. and, and the instrument as well. Like, yeah, it, that's, it just kind of had me sleeping. Yeah, that's a really fair like criticism, is that Tom York's voice, like it's just very static. And so at times it it feels just boring. I I can understand that. But yeah. the other thing, the thing that I come back to that I like about his voice is like the clarity that he brings. Not necessarily in his like enunciation of anything because he's mumbling almost all the way through this album. Yeah. But I don't know. I just like the way his voice sounds. Um, but yeah, it, it's a long song. And um, but what I like about it, and it comes down to what I seem to like a lot about Radiohead, is that they, you know. It's not just spacey sound. Like I think spacey sound uh, can feel repetitive, and it can feel like it's it can feel shallow and empty to me. Um, and I know that's the point, but I think when you overuse it, it can it can uh, sort of feel like it's not leading anywhere. So I think what they did with this one really well is how they used the instrumentation. So for me, that's what works the best of this song. So that's kind of what I come back to. But yeah, I can understand why someone might think it's slightly too yeah. long. Okay. Uh, let's move on to track three then. Uh, this one's called Dex Dark. A little bit of alliteration there. Uh, <laughs> Mateo, what did you think? Yeah, for Dex Dark, I think at this point I'm kind of just realizing I had no idea what the lyrics were and the vocals are. So I had to just pull up like the genius lyrics, if I'm being completely honest. Yeah. Like, uh, again... It's so slow, really kind of over it. <laughs> Not burnt okay. out, but, I, but I'm over it. I honestly, I'm just like, eh, I, I understand the sounds, you know. I thought it was a really cool piano? I don't know, yeah. maybe it was bass yeah. or something? I don't know what it was, but... It's piano. I, I think overall that was really cool. Yeah. Um, I, 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 this is kind of the starting point of a pattern I noticed later on. I kind of wish they use that really cool instrumental part that they only use in some parts of it, like throughout the entire song, instead of just starting up around like the middle half. You know, I, I, I didn't necessarily feel like there needed to be that kind of build up mm -hmm. until the middle half. And instead of just like, maybe yeah, you can still have some build up, but, but maybe you have it, you know, 10, 20, 30 seconds long, and then just kind of get right into it. You know, uh, I guess I just didn't feel like I wanted to really wait with Dex Stark. You know. Okay. What were yeah. your, what were your thoughts? 
Um, I kind of disagree. <laughs> I mean, um, here's what I like. I agree with you on the piano. I think the piano melodies, as usual, are really good here. But I like the tension that it builds up slowly. I think it, you know, I think the point where you're talking about where the instrumentation kind of comes in the middle is sort of mm-hmm. when the drums kick in. And I thought they kind of kicked in at a perfect point. Um, you know, you have sort of the melodic voice, the great piano melodies building up this tension to this midway moment. Do I agree that maybe it could have been a little earlier? Yeah, maybe a little bit earlier, but I yeah. I don't mind it. I think it's almost as perfect as could be. Um, maybe like a few, like a 10 seconds earlier or so, just so that, you know, you don't completely, uh, maybe phase out of the song as much. Um, I thought the mixing here was good. Um, I think again, there's a strong cinematic quality in this song as well. There's a little bit of choir, uh, oh, wow, I messed up that word, choir voices. (laughs) All good, all good. Choir voices adding to like the larger than life feeling of the song. Um, as I was saying also earlier, is that Radiohead's like almost always been used in cinematic uh, ways. They recently used this song in uh, the trailer for Disney's Artemis Fowl movie. So mm-hmm. if you've seen that trailer, it's in there. Um, so I knew I recognized it from somewhere, but it was from there. But um, you know, otherwise, I think it's it's pretty good. The ending for me is so so. I think that's where they tried to bring in more of that psychedelic sound at the end. It's nothing i'm you know a huge fan of but i didn't mind it again i think this is i think burn the witch to down to dex dark is uh really solid work from radiohead i think you know like just i'm getting sort of that deja vu from discovery where i was like these top three songs you should definitely listen to and i think of this album certainly these three are top contenders for when i finally make my pick at the end for my (laughs) best song but yeah that's pretty much all i got for dex dark it's it's a good one Okay. All right, we are now moving on to Desert Island Disc. So, uh, Rashab, if you don't mind, maybe I can go first, just because I yeah. honestly I don't have a bunch to say about this song. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Um, this is the point, Rashab. This yes. is it. Um, at this point, I'm I'm completely asleep. You're checked cool, out. Cool lyrics. Wish it was a different song. To be completely honest, I wish okay. everything else like. Don't get me wrong, Radiohead is really cool implementation of, like, uh, the creativity of just kind of different instruments and stuff like that, and the mixing's great, but, like, mm-hmm. I just wish it was sung differently, just kind of everything was different. Keep the cool lyrics, change everything else up, though. Okay. I was not here for it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, I, I totally get what you're getting for, with, from the singing, because, like, for me, that is one of the biggest, maybe, qualms that I have, and at the same time, weirdly, it's one of the best parts of the album for me. I totally get, like, his voice lacks emotion completely. Yeah. It's so very, like, you know, there's a really thin line, I think, between making something sound, um, not necessarily experimental, but making it sound like it has a very, like, consistent quality to it versus, you know completely lacking emotion sounding dreary so i think tom york is uh, just as an artist even if you listen to anima which you know you can listen on your own time or maybe it'll come up later uh Uh, you know if you were to listen to that some of those tracks again have the same issues with his voice kind of just being a little flat at the same time as i said i love the quality of his voice so I, i understand where you're coming with that I'm not a big fan of this track necessarily. I don't remember it that well, honestly, either. I'm kind of, I actually just listened back to it a little bit while you were talking. Um, but based on what I wrote down, it's a lighter song, I would say. It is a little bit, I guess, muddled production wise. I didn't really necessarily feel a completeness with this one, perhaps. Um, good acoustic guitar. I think this is the first few times that we're listening to acoustic uh, in the album. Um, and it kind of sounds almost to me like a folk song with like a Radiohead flourish, if that makes sense. Kinda, yeah. Maybe because of the acoustic guitar, maybe because it's sort of just sounds a little bit lighter. But yeah, not not a particularly strong track. Um, pretty unmemorable, if you ask me. Um, and I gotta agree with you. From here on out, um, we'll talk about the albums because I think there's some issues with some of the tracks, or perhaps where I you know, personally, just didn't feel as connected to them, or maybe where I phased out, I'm not sure, but, uh, yeah, let's get into that. Yeah. So, the next one's called Full Stop, with F-U-L Stop. Um, 
this one was really interesting to me, if, if you don't mind me starting off. Um, Go ahead. This one was sort of trying to like intertwine two very different sounds, which I've noticed is something they try to do often. Um, and sometimes it works and makes like this really consistent, really amazing new sound. And sometimes it's kind of middling. And I think this is one of the cases where it was kind of middling. Um, it has sort of that cinematic orchestral sound, but it's also trying to be like this very like 90s rock song. And they're trying to put those two together into one track. Um, it still has sort of that spaciness to it. Um, and it's a little, uh, it's pretty upbeat. But to me, a, a lot of this song sounds like noise that doesn't quite fit together. Um, you know, I think they were trying to make it sound like, uh, like, it's weird because it starts off cinematic and then it goes into the generic, more 90s rock. And then they kind of have each sound kind of have its moment and then, then try to build it into something more whole. Um, but I wasn't fully impressed with it. I think it's pretty consistent with what they've tried to do in other tracks and it makes sense within their discography. But yeah, I'm not a huge fan of this track per se. Mateo, what did you think? Um, for full stop, at first, like, I kind of got excited because of the beat, but honestly, I was let down again. Mm -hmm. To me, it was the same exact mumble, soft words, blah, 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 you know, like, the the song got, again, way better at, like, the half point when you, when you have the full flourish of, like, all the instruments, all the different vocals and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but then again, it just leaves me hanging. Like, why wasn't the full song just this? I don't know why they couldn't just pick. You know, like you said, they were trying to mash up two different things that didn't kind of work. I'm just like, why couldn't they just stick with one? You know, mm -hmm. at, at least again, have a quicker build up. Like, all I really gotta say is like, I got some cool kind of spooky vibes from it. I mean, there was uh -huh. like there was like some <laughs> weird shrieking at the end. I didn't really get. But uh -huh. e even though I'm saying all these kind of maybe harsh things, it, it was a more top song for me. Wow. Okay. <laughs> but just, your review is so like uh, counter to your actual opinion. It's kind yeah, of funny. I, I, well, maybe that's just because I don't really care for most of the rest of the songs on this album. If I'm being whoa, honest. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> we'll talk about that. We'll talk I about might that. agree. I don't know. We'll find out. Okay. Well, uh, that's all I got for full stop. You know, it had me at a full stop, so. Yeah, I'm not super impressed with this track. I, I kind of want to listen back to it and see what I think now, but, um, yeah, nothing, nothing too impressive here. Um, again, like you mentioned, Mateo. Yeah. To me, it's not so much that the song is slow. It's more that the two sounds that they were kind of going for, that they normally do go for, and it sometimes works, you know, in, in previous songs, as we've seen, doesn't really work here. Yeah. And I think the biggest issue with Radiohead, uh, or in this album in general, is that uh, the problems that occur are generally because somehow the sounds, they don't layer right, or perhaps they get too ambitious with all the different things they're trying to pack in. Because if you think about it, it's a pretty instrumentally dense album, especially in some of the yeah. more upcoming songs. There's... They're trying to pack in a lot of different sounds while trying to maintain the spacey quality to it. And that's why I say something like Daydreaming or Dex Dark, they really um, nail that sound in a way that songs like perhaps Full Stop couldn't. Desert Island Disc, you know, that's sort of its own thing and different for its own and has its own negatives for its own thing. But Full Stop, I think, is where they were trying to go for something similar to other stuff, but uh, didn't really work out. Mm -hmm. So... Let's move on to Glass Eyes. Mateo, what did you think of this one? Uh, I thought it was an absolutely beautiful, like, piano intro. Mm -hmm. I thought it was very, very nice. Mm -hmm. I, I really liked that part. I, I even thought the vocals worked overall with Glass Eyes. Mm -hmm. But at this point, this is the point, I'm like, these vocals are not for me mm -hmm. at all. I'm like, I, I don't know. I'm over the vocals, but like I, I feel like I gotta bring this up because well, we bring this up for literally every episode of Oxfiend. I think I know. Is, is this is this the lullaby? <laughs> like, I thought you were gonna, I thought you were gonna say interlude, but I, oh, I mean, yeah. same thing. It's lullaby interlude, same thing. <laughs> like it's the shortest song. It's well, quote slow as slow yeah. as you can be with this uh, with this yeah, album. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, it's in the middle of an album. It's in the exact like middle. 
what's this? It's a six track of eleven tracks. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I I, I, I wouldn't go as as I definitely thought of it as an interlude because now my brain is just wired to find the interlude in each album. So I was like, yeah. this must be it, but uh, sort of, but not really. I think it stands um a little bit more strongly than some of the uh, you know other songs where <laughs> other albums where we thought of interludes. You know, yeah. Uh, it has a little bit more personality to it, but yeah, it's it's short, I guess. Uh, not that short compared to like a normal song, but since a lot of the songs here are like six minutes plus, a like less than three minute song feels like an interlude, even though I would say it's not quite an interlude. Um, but yeah, this one again, the vocals, it's whatever. I mean, I, again, this is one of the places where I you can't really connect to the vocals. Um, but the nice thing, though, is that this is a soft song. The lyrics sort of come out a little bit clearer from Tom York, too. I think there's slightly less mumble, but again, it doesn't have that emotion or whatever. Um, they sort of lose the spacey sound in this one, focus on the strings. Um, it has a melancholic quality to it. Not a super memorable song. Somehow, I just feel like they could not get the emotion right um, in this track where it should have been right. Uh, but a good attempt, nonetheless, I think, you know, especially for a two minute, 53 second track, I don't know if I would say like I didn't like it. I thought it was fine. I think it's not uh, anywhere near as impressive as some of the previous tracks or maybe even some of the upcoming ones. Um, but not that bad, I'd say. It's just not super memorable. I just needed a little bit more emotion here somewhere. But yeah, I, I totally get where you're coming in uh, or coming with with the interlude term because we gotta yeah. always pick one <laughs> but yeah that's that's pretty much it for me from glass eyes um so the next one is called identikit yeah identikit. Uh, hopefully i'm pronouncing that the way they intended i think that's it um i'll start off on this one again identikit was not one that i particularly gravitated towards um it's a radiohead song they use a little bit of muffled sound here um they work around with some more clear instrumentation uh there's some drums in here that are nice some guitars one of the things i've noticed at least for me mateo chime in if you want but um even with the tracks that i don't necessarily love what i like about them as a group from what i can tell from this album is just a variety of instrumentation even though it doesn't always work like i yeah. mentioned before. I, I i do definitely agree with that i mean that, we'll, we'll, i'll definitely get into that and jump into that when we have the we full album the review album. yeah but yeah. i i that they have they get points where it's due yeah i love their extreme diversity of just different instruments just all around and then though you're right it doesn't work all the time yep i i, I do appreciate hearing sounds and beats and just different just audio waves that I'm used to really not hearing all the time yeah. in like a mainstream song or really any song. Yeah. You know? And uh, yeah, I think we'll save some of that definitely for the end of the album, but yeah, I, I definitely agree. Um, so Mateo, anything you wanted to add for Identicit? Yeah. For Identicit, um, I had kind of like burn the witch, a little bit of the death stranding soundtrack kind of vibes. Interesting. Again, 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 second half of the song when I get Everything going together. It's way better. Yeah. Overall, yeah. identikit for me, it came and it went. Yeah, yeah, I I can agree with that a little bit. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think that's pretty much good for that track too. Um. We're moving on to the next track now. This one's called The Numbers. I'll start off on this one again. Um. This one starts really interesting. You got to give it that. The intro is sort of like this flurry of different sound and piano. It's it's almost like a very stereotypical experimental um track beginning, but still interesting in its own right. I, I liked it. I liked how it began. Again, got to talk about the variety of yeah. instrumentation: piano, guitar. It's all here. Agreed, again, agreed. you got to hear those electric guitars, violins. Uh, I actually found the instrumentation in this one to be really pretty good. It's mixed well. It's layered a lot better than some of the other talk tracks that we were talking about. Um, it doesn't sound as just like abrasively noisy. It has um, a more consistent sound to it. It has this, like I almost want to say like an empowering sound to it. It has a powerful sound to it. It has sort of the cinematic sound to it, but it also sounds very hushed in the way that a good Radiohead song would. Uh I like this one. I 
can't remember like exact specifics of it, but just looking back at my notes, I, I remember liking this one uh, quite a bit, especially um, sort of in juxtaposed to some of the other tracks we've been talking about. So, Mateo, what did you think? Yeah, um, I, I agree with, with you. Some of what you said was a uh, cool intro, just uh, cool stuff and instrumentations and everything. Um, to me, to bring up, I think, I think the key word you, you started off with at the beginning of this episode really resonated a lot with uh, the numbers was cinematic. To me, it, mm-hmm. I, I, I never even thought about that, like the whole album as a whole until, you know, the end of it. But like, I really yeah. got, I, I thought this would work uh, great as kind of like, just like a music video or standalone, just kind of like seen in a movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think this works though, like as a song on an album. If I'm being honest, okay. to me it worked as like it was another sleeper. Uh, you know, at, at this point, I'm kind of feel like I'm, I'm I'm running out of stuff to say without being completely repetitive about how I'm kind of this just isn't my style because that's okay. what Radiohead is, especially in this whole album. It's just all one style, and it's just not for me. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. I, I can give it credit where it's due. Uh, again, I, I thought it was it would work beautifully, kind of cinematically, but not as something I'd want to listen to just with audio. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, yeah, I, I understand that, and uh, you know, I wouldn't say I was like fully, you know, totally impressed by the numbers, but I think it's definitely uh, one of their. You know, especially when you think about the other tracks that we've kind of listened to, I always come back to full stop. I'm I'm really coming close to calling that <laughs> that one my worst one because. Whoa. Yeah, I mean, uh, we'll, we'll, I'll confirm at the end just to make sure, but I'm really close to calling that one the worst because you know the one the problem with that track compared to this track um, is that that one's just super noisy and it doesn't feel like it's heading anywhere. This one, you know, I felt like it had a more consistent sound to it. So uh, I appreciated it for that one. So I think this is closer to what we kind of listened to in the first three tracks, definitely. Uh, so that's pretty much all I got for the numbers. Uh, we're moving on now to present tense. Mateo, start us off for this one. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll say it. This one was my favorite mm-hmm. out of everything. Um, not to say that's a huge accomplishment, though. I this This one I definitely had the least amount of negative things to say. I'd say mm-hmm. overall, I think maybe that's kind of why I picked it. I, I think it's interesting to go back to the first track, Burn the Witch. Mm-hmm. When I first listened to it, I was actually almost over it. When I had only heard that one song, I was like, okay, I hope these songs all change up. Obviously, they didn't. I, I think the, the rest of the tracks on this album kind of took the worst parts of Burn the Witch and uh, I guess present tense too and just kind of... Just made them slower, more mumbly. Just kind of made I them mean, worse overall. I I, I think that's okay. why I had Burn the Witch as a top contender or my second favorite, just because I think it did the best out of all these until I got to present tense, and that's why I kind of said this was kind of the easiest is to say, oh, this is my favorite, but it's lesser favorite and more or less just I have the least amount of negative things to say about it. Okay, you know I. To actually get into the song, you know, as a cool shaker instruments, great, of course, great instruments, you know. Um, I, I sense the pattern or tune of parts of each of these kind of songs, but everything else, even I, here, I do have negatives about it. Everything else kind of disappointed with the song, too, a little bit. I thought there was really good vocal echo, though, and I, I, I think, uh, again, I know I'm saying some negatives about this, but. This was my favorite, and I think just because I I, I I could pick, I could just kind of cherry pick just different parts of present tense, and just be like, okay, I really like the use of this, I really like the use of this, I didn't like this use, but like, I I, I guess overall the the positives kind of weighed out the negatives for this song for me. Okay, cool. Um, interesting. Um, I really like the song as well. Uh, it's definitely in the contendership for being one of my favorites, and I, I don't, a little disagree with you, Mateo. I mean, I would say that a lot of the tracks do sound similar. Um, they yeah. have slight differences. Uh, we can get into that at the end. But I think present tense is easily the most different. Uh, this one is interesting because it loses both of what is like what has been sort of through the rest of the tracks been established as some of their bigger trademarks. Like the cinematic sound is sort of gone here. Uh, we lose some of the rock music sound. We lose some of that spacey sound too. And what's kind of left is 
a singer, a guitar, and what I think is a little bit more of a peppy, almost pop songish vibe. Um, again, there's the use of like what I think is classical guitar in this one. I just really like the vibe on this one. It's sort of, it's very relaxed. It's a relaxed song. Um, it's lighthearted. It has like a frothy, poppy vibe to it. Um, I like Tom York's vocals on this one. I really do. I think this is proof that he's has the ability to do something beyond what we've seen, you know, in the previous tracks. He can actually modulate his voice a little bit and and use it um, and to create a uh, interesting sound. And uh, yeah, I, I really like the song. I think it was a pretty big departure from the rest of their styles. It, it had like the little elements just to make sure that you know that you know this is still Radiohead. You're still listening to the same album. Um, but uh, a refreshing change from the rest of the album for sure. Um, and I, I really like this one. It's definitely in contendership uh, when we get to the end. So that's pretty much it for present tense. Again, I would definitely not recommend this if you're trying to get a sense of the vibe for Radiohead as a band. But if you're someone who perhaps want to, wants to see the variety that Radiohead can bring sometimes, I would definitely recommend checking out this track in particular. All right, Mateo, so before we get to the next track, we have to prove to everyone exactly how long the title is. So if you're all on board with me, okay, do you have the full track name pulled up? And if not, can you do that right now? Uh, I do have it pulled up, and I'll be honest with you, I, I counted it. I counted okay. how many words okay. there are. Okay, so here's, here's what we're going to do really quick, is we're just going to say a word each, so you guys get a sense of how long it takes to fully say out the entire title of this track. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and start off. Okay. And then you guys will probably understand why, you know, it took us so long to even say the name of this track. So I'll start off. So Tinker. Taylor. Soldier. Sailor. Rich. Man. Poor. Man. Beggar. Man. Okay, but you kind of got the slightly less interesting end of <laughs> yeah. that, but... <laughs> So the whole album's track is called Tinker Taylor Soldier Sailor. Oh, yes, there's another word. Yeah, there's the another end. word. Another one sneaked by you. Oh, I'm so sorry. By it, it did. <laughs> so it's Tinker Taylor Soldier Sailor, Rich Man, Poor Man, Beggar Man, Thief. That's yeah. the whole title. I don't know. I don't know about you, but but I think that's probably the longest title for a song I've ever seen. Oh, dude, I counted it. Eleven word title. Let's start. That's I've never seen absolutely longer. Absolutely insane. Like, yeah. I I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's crazy. Super long, you know. Man, that is. Imagine I just imagine someone being like, "Hey, can you turn on Tinker Taylor, Soldier Taylor, and then saying the whole thing Rich out." Rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief. Yep. You know. You that's can't even abbreviate all. That it, one. You know. It's you really like, can't. You really can't. You really but, can't. I, I mean, I, I think... Uh, let me jump in first, if you don't mind, after we just say ahead, that. It's a super ahead. long name. I, I mean, I'm just going to call it Tinker Taylor, I guess, instead of repeating the full... Full of them. No, but Taylor, you have to you have to say the entire uh, title every time you okay, reference the song. Okay, okay. My feelings about Tinker Taylor, Soldier Sailor, Rich Man, Poor Man, Beggar Man, Thief are... Good, good. Cool song name. Song sounds exactly the same as the rest of the songs. Shab. I'm sorry, dude. Like, I think all the creativity honestly just went to the name. Each 11 word just took another percentage, like 10%. It took wow. 110% of just harsh, all the creativity. Harsh. Uh, you know, I'll give it this. Good. Uh, I think it was violin. Maybe violin. I don't really know what string instrument was. instrumentation. I think it's violin. Which, yeah. yeah. Good string Im- instrumentation. Um,. It was a very creative, uh, descending, I think, arpeggio. I'm not that musically inclined. So I don't know if that was an arpeggio, but it was cool descending just sounds, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, overall, though, for Tinker Taylor, I thought it was another song of kind of wasted potential. And being honest, now looking at the cool name, the 11-word name title, I think wasted <laughs> title, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I think I could have been on a better song. I don't know. Yeah, like a like a Chuck Pearson song being that yeah. long. Honestly, Ch- Chuck Pearson could use a, could use some titles. I mean, we got to go beyond A one and B two. So yeah, being honest, I think Radiohead actually just stole all of Chuck Pearson's <laughs> titles. You know. Wow. <laughs> In this. You know. This was this was actually this this title is actually eleven different songs that Chuck Pearson had 
titled, and then Radiohead just took it and made it one track. Yeah, it's actually a mix match game. You gotta max the match the the, the word to the track uh, <laughs> over on Echo Jams and stuff. You know, you know yeah, go do that much. back at home. You know. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I I like the song a little bit more than you do. I agree yeah. that it's uh, again fitting within the Radiohead style, definitely way more than Present Tense, which was a lot more of a departure. But what I like about this one is that they go all in on the cinematic sound at the end. The outro is um, super cinematic. I like how they keep this track more minimalist until the very end. That is. Um, so I felt like this was just a cleaner song for them. It didn't have the, again, like I've been saying earlier, like that abrasive noise that something like a full stop had, you know, cleaner. And it builds up to this very solid ending. Again, I'm not, you know, necessarily floored by this or anything, but it was definitely one that I, I liked. I could potentially even go back and listen to this one. Um, overall, pretty good. That's that's my thoughts on this very lengthy okay. titled album or album track. Uh, so yeah, okay. I think you know we might not be we're not entirely on board, but I can I I'm not fully positive on it. I agree it has a lot of that repetition to the rest of the sound and nothing to p- particularly differentiate it. Um, but it was done better. I think it was just a cleaner track in general. I didn't feel like I uh, lost that consistency. And neither did I necessarily lose that sort of experimentation that they're known for. So I felt like it was a little bit of best of both worlds. So for me, not too bad. Not too bad. Um, True Love Waits. We're now on the last track of this album. Mateo, I have a lot to say about this track. In particular, yeah. one specific thing. One specific thing I have a lot to talk about. Oh. So I'll go ahead and let you start. Okay. I, I mean, if you... Um do process of elimination and before I even get into that I'll just say another slow song dude uh, I think you can tell with the process of elimination I haven't said my least favorite yet this is my least favorite mm-hmm. um, uh, like by now dude I'm done I'm done with Radiohead it was that's why it was easy to maybe pick my favorite because those just sounded the most different the two mm-hmm. tracks but like I think this was hard to pick my least favorite because all these songs sound exactly the same. They all have the same vocals. Like, the only thing different is, like, the cool instrumentals. But, like, otherwise, oh, dude, I'm just, I'm glad this (laughs) album, it was such a slog. I'm glad it was over. I'm sorry, Rishab. This is definitely, like, my least favorite. I had to, like, listen to a couple different ones because they just all sound different. I was just like, "Ah." yeah, 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 this one's just, like, maybe the slowest or something and i'll leave it off at this you know the direct lyrics in the song says don't leave and all i gotta say to that is don't worry i can't leave if i'm already gone (laughs) okay um yeah i mean mateo to be honest when we get into our full album review i there are parts that i might agree with you in terms of it being a slog in some places uh but for this final track this song or this track is sort of personal to me because it's from it was used in one of what was my one of my favorite actually my favorite movie from last year uh the name of the movie was waves and i think that's this song in particular was so beautiful used in that movie not going to get into it too much because this is off scenes we're talking about music here uh, but movies. because not movies even though we this whole album cinematic but it was so well used in that uh, that film that it became like, at one point, it was like one of my very favorite tracks in general. And so that's kind of also what led me into picking this album because I wanted to see how the rest of the album stacks up. While listening to this track, I tried to forget about the film as much as possible because, you know, sometimes that's the number one thing. But it was pretty hard. And so I ended up kind of fading out from the song because for me, that's like it's such a direct connection to that movie. Um, but I tried to take some notes from a more, um, you know, from a perspective that was just strictly about the songs. I still, I think it, it, it holds up pretty well. I feel like I really need to listen to this one again and just, um, digest it more as a song necessarily than something that was attached to something else. But what I like is how the piano is used here. It gives it sort of like a, like a raindrop quality. There's a, again, sort of a minimalist clean beat here. 
And the best part about this track, Mateo, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised you didn't bring this up because you had issues with the vocals. Maybe you had similar issues with this track, too. But for me, this is where Tom York brings in the most emotion um, from any other track on this album. I think this is the part where I can actually hear sort of his voice. Um, so for me, that's easily one of my favorite parts of this track is that I, I finally get to hear the lead singer um you know, put emotion into his voice and not have sort of that static quality all the way through. Uh, so for me, True Love Waits is an interesting track to review just because uh, for me, like the way it's used in that movie is so perfect. And it's like one of the most important songs in the movie, too. Um, but looking at it from from not from that perspective, I still have a pretty good deal of respect for it because of the fact that um, Tom York used his voice well here. There's a minimalist clean beat. So. I do want to re-listen to this, but for now, I'll say it's pretty good. I like this one for sure. So that pretty much brings us to the end of our album. Um, so let's go into our full-on album reviews. As oh, usual, oh, oh, I... Rishab, I did want to say this. Go ahead. That is the end of the official album. I had actually texted you this before oh, we yes, recorded. Yeah. Um, on, the spe- on the wiki, I found out uh, there's a special edition bonus disc version of this album and there's two extra tracks we didn't listen to them just because they're not on the official just kind of album we we just went by spotify and i'm sure other major uh uploading music sites just have the only 11 tracks they don't have the extra two and and so those tracks are uh, i think it's just three wind and specter and yeah just for any of those the guys who are curious or think we're just uh, on purposely missing out which i guess we have we are but we know they exist Just yeah, we, we're pretty much that. we're pretty much going by the Spotify list here. But um, as per the main album, this is the official yeah. end. Uh, so yeah, let's let's get into the album review. I think I was saying that uh, almost like as usual, we kind of have covered the main points, but it's kind of nice to gather our thoughts. Yeah. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let uh, Mateo start us off here. Okay. Um, of course, like you said, I've said this before. I'll say it multiple times again. This is not my style. This is not my scene. There's not anything about me at all, if I'm being honest. I, I came into that way. I came to the album feeling that way. I actually, I'll be honest, I expected to, li- to like it a lot more than I disliked it this okay. time around. Um, of course, I'll give them the credit where they deserve it. I think it was great instrumental diversity throughout this entire album. I, I, mm-hmm. I really did appreciate that. And, and I think for some certain tracks, it actually definitely worked overall and Mm -hmm. i and i thought there was like really good mixing you know just just looking at the like the audio producer kind of side overall and none of them seemed un too unfinished or just like weird sounds going around other than the sounds that were on purposely you know off-putting or kind of weird um again some cool beats here and there but being honest to me this album just kind of sounded very derivative of Radiohead. Now, what I mean by that is, I I, I mean, it almost sounded like Radiohead because you said this was the the newest release, right? Newest one, yeah. Yeah. So th- this just sounded like Radiohead was trying to make more Radiohead songs about like Radiohead, almost. You know. And here's the thing: I'd only really listened to like Creep and a couple other top Radiohead songs, and I'll be honest, I don't know if you know this either, I don't like Creep at all, I don't like the songs I had heard before, you know, mm-hmm. I guess I saved that till now, but it, it, it just really sounded like they were trying to find maybe their old style, though again, I hadn't really listened to much of them beforehand, it just sounded, they were just trying to make a Radiohead song, if that makes sense, and not in a good way, you know, I, I'll leave it at this. As usual, I like rating stuff out of 10. Um, this is definitely, I'd say maybe, it's hard to say because I did rate it low. I understand it's not a bad album overall, but it's just not my scene. And I think there could have been a lot better potential overall, you know? Yeah. And, and I think at the points it does get is purely only just for the producing side and the beats and the, definitely the instrumentation that it does use. And so that's why I, I got to give this album a 4 out of 10. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. 
All right. Well, I'm glad that you were honest about that. And uh, I think you'll find that I agree in certain elements, and, and I, of course, disagree in, some, in others, as you can probably already tell by how I reviewed the tracks. Um, when it comes to like just the general vibe on the album, the general sound that they're going for, as we've mentioned many times, there's a lot that they're trying to do here. We've mentioned like atmospheric, uh, with, like spacey effects that we've called sort of throughout um, classical instrumentation, you know, like acoustic guitars, you know, pianos, strings, you know, all of that stuff. Plus, you have uh, like a very 90s rock sound coming in. Plus, you have a very sort of interesting singer at the center of it. So like I mentioned, it's a dense album in terms of sound. They're trying to pack in what I believe to be like a lot of different sounds, often into um, single tracks. So there is some inconsistency that comes with that. And I think for me, the biggest thing with this album is um, it's pretty inconsistent. I would say there's never uh, a portion of songs, except for maybe the top three songs where I feel like it's very consistently good. And even within the tracks themselves, there's portions that work really, really well, other portions that are super underwhelming. Um, and I think that comes with any sort of uh, artist that is, you know, experimental. This is ultimately experimental rock. Um, but we're going to just judge it based on the merits that, you know, we see in it. So, or at least I am. Um, and for me, um, I would say there are times when the sounds just don't come together at all. And um, it sometimes isn't even, you know, necessarily one track where it's not coming together. Sometimes it's one, you know, pretty good track. And then there's little portions where things just don't work and the sound doesn't come together in a way that that resonates really well. Um, but at the same time, as Matteo has mentioned, you got to give him props. And yeah. this is something I like and appreciate it as well throughout the album is just the diversity of the instrumentation and the moments where it sounds really good and the moments where they get all those different sounds to really click or even the songs where they get those things to really click, it's perfect. I think, you know, going back and, and picking my, you know, best and worst, I think we're ready to kind of talk about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, for me, easily the worst one, I would say, is Full Stop, as I was kind oh. of, you know, talking about earlier. Um it doesn't come together the way I'd like it to. I think, you know, even something like Identikit uh, is somewhere in there in terms of being the worst. It, those songs, you don't really feel a connection. They don't really resonate. Uh, whereas something like my best or favorite song, um, which is almost a tie, but I'm going to give it to Daydreaming because it. I Whoa. think it's more sort of... Um, indicative of radiohead sound overall i think this is the one where i would be like this is radiohead really nailing what their strengths are and then the close one i would say was present tense i mean i really liked how they departured from the rest of their sound and went for something really different i, I really like that but for me i the reason i sort of like the the best parts of this album is because it has that cinematic quality to it it has larger than life quality to it uh, but it also has you know it, it pushes into experimental territory just enough where I can, you know, appreciate those aspects too. And uh, for me, ultimately, it comes down to I like sort of the sound that they try for, not necessarily succeed every time. I like the sound that they try for, where they try to give it a spacey quality and then fill it with interesting instruments and still have it feel spacey and uh, but still feel melodic. And then Tom York trying to do. Uh, his vocals, which are always interesting, I've always found them interesting. It's one of the main reasons I was excited to review Radiohead or a Radiohead album is because I find his quality of voice super interesting. Um, but not to get too repetitive now here at the end, but um, I'm definitely more positive than Matteo for sure. Yeah. Uh, but not as positive as I've been on some of our previous albums that we reviewed, mm -hmm. uh, like Discovery or, or something like Melodrama. Or so I'm going to go... Oh, uh, well, I don't know about should, but <laughs> I'm going to go with 7 out of 10 for this one. I think 7 Whoa. out of 10 is a pretty strong grade, if you ask me. Not not too shabby, if, if I say so, uh, myself. Um, you know, I think it's, you know, could have been stronger in some portions. But this is one of those places where, or one of those albums where I'd say the ambition really shows, and I appreciated what they tried to do. Um, and sometimes it was successful in songs like Daydreaming. So overall, I would say um, 
you know, maybe try and give a few songs a listen. Maybe try the top three tracks that are here at the top. Um, and then see what you think. And uh, see if Radiohead maybe is something that you'd be interested in. Um, sort of interesting, of course, we have to go back to the comparisons I brought up at the beginning. Uh, I don't really agree with a lot of those comparisons. In particular, you know, something like David Bowie or Talking Heads. Maybe more Pink Floyd. But Bowie and Talking Heads just doesn't feel like a valid comparison to yeah. me. Yeah, I agree. Especially, you know, Bowie. I don't know. It's a little weird to bring him up um, in this sort of space. But I understand what they're saying is like they're they're all kind of experimental in their own ways. But um, Radiohead is is its own thing. And if you can maybe delve into the slow pacing of their sound and the uniqueness of it, um, it might be a fruitful listening experience for you. So that pretty much caps off my thoughts on uh, A Moon Shaped Pool by Radiohead, their 2016 album. And that pretty much does it for our review of this album. Yeah. So usually, Mateo, what happens is that we have a little housekeeping portion yeah. where for the past few episodes, we've promised something called mu- music news. And I've <laughs> known what that is. Uh, but for once, for once, I have just a little bit of music news. We won't discuss it super extensively yeah. because I think this album is long enough. Um, and this episode is going to be long enough. But um and of course, we have to get to Mateo's pick. Yeah. Um, but as you may or may not know, there was a single dropped recently. Mateo, do you have any clue what I'm talking about? No, not at all. It's uh, not it's, at all. It's been making some waves on the internet because uh, it's a collaboration between two uh, very famous, very well known, very contemporary uh, rappers in the hip hop world. Uh, of course, I'm talking about Travis Scott and Kid Cudi um, coming together and oh, releasing really? a track called The Scots uh, as part of some like elaborate Fortnite concert. I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah. I, I'd seen clips of the Fortnite concert. That was, that was actually pretty I, I have cool. no clue what that is, honestly. I have no <laughs> oh, clue. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Fortnite just had like – I don't know if it was – I don't know if it was pre-recorded or what. I'd only seen a couple of clips, but I'll be honest. I, I, I dabbled in Fortnite in the past. I mean, it's just like – kids game or whatever but but like from the clips i had seen uh, i thought it was just a travis scott concert it was actually like really cool and like really well done it was like an interactive music video basically and all the animation i mean this is kind of steering away just from the music like my opinions on travis scott and stuff are separate from the the, the Fortnite concert sure yeah but but uh like just like from a like a film and kind of cinematic and animation and game standpoint it was like really cool Cool. I'd be excited to see uh, you know, more artists collaborating with kind of video games and, and stuff like that. I think it was really well done. Yeah, so uh, Mateo and any other listeners, if you haven't checked out that track, check it out. I gave it a listen. Uh, personally, I think it's a very generic Travis Scott sort of track. Um, I kind of like the ending of it. It's sort of different from some of the things he's done, sort of. But actually not really, because I feel like he's done much better with his tracks, you know, um, especially talking about something like Astral World as an album. Some of the tracks he's done on there um, just, you know, don't even it, it doesn't come close to some of his best work, you know. And I, I get that it's, you know, exciting or whatever that Travis Scott and Kid Cudi have done a, done a track and it kind of came in the super, you know, uh, big mainstream um what do you call it? Like a big pomp and show with it. Of course, the Fortnite thing. Yeah. Uh, but I thought it was pretty generic. Uh, maybe I'll listen to it again and see what I think. But uh, maybe I'll check it out. I don't know. Yeah, that's that's one pretty big music news. Uh, another a big sort of thing that has come through is that here's an artist that I'd never heard of before, but um, it's she's been making waves with her new album. The name of the artist is Fiona Fiona Apple. Uh, supposedly she's won a lot of awards and is um, considered to be pretty big uh, and sort of undefinable also in terms of music categories. To me, I listened to some of the tracks off the new album. Sounds a lot like Regina Spector's music. Maybe I'm completely missing the mark here. Maybe if you're a a big fan of Fiona Apple, um, you would totally disagree. But um, yeah, that's one big album that sort of uh, I've seen sort of making the rounds around um, social media or the internet or elsewhere and uh, people seem to be enjoying it quite a bit um, so that's pretty much it in terms of music news that I can think of um, Mateo yeah. did you have anything? I think you're missing the biggest 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 music news of all you know what that is Rashab? what is it? that it's my turn to pick the next album <laughs> it's bad news I didn't know nobody told me it was bad news but well not all news is good, good news you know 
All press is good press, but I think that's the best way to lead into my pick. Now, I'll say this. I had listened to this album once full time through a year ago. This, this, this album came out in 1997. Oh, boy. You, everyone definitely knows at least one song off this album. I don't think it's gonna be too mean. I don't know how much music you listen to, like this specific genre of music you listen to. You'll definitely know the one song that I'm thinking okay. of right now, and everyone else will think of once they they hear. Well, if they even know, maybe the band, the artist name, you know. But uh, drum roll, please. Just kidding. We don't have any drums. We we're not we're not yes, that high budget. Yes, we're not that high budget at all. That my album choice is The Mollusk by Ween. Hooray. <laughs> Look, okay. it, has, it has Ocean Man on it. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Uh, you listen to Ween at all? I, I do. Like, I, 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 I mean, like, I love Ocean Man. I, I love... Well, I like I, Ocean I have Man. the Mollusk on vinyl. Yeah. Not to get too into it, because this is not the Mollusk episode, but... I'm not, super, I'm not super you're, excited for this. I, whoa, really? Uh, look, okay. Look, I mean, I don't. Th- it will be better than Echo Jams. I guarantee that. I just, I, I'm sure of it because, like, '97. You know, I guess was that like rock music? Uh, yeah. Rock. Uh, it, was, it was like rock, uh, prog rock, alternative rock. Uh, oh yeah, indie, all, all rock. All those right? kind of I mean, rock, like '90s sure. alt rock. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah, I'm gonna 97. be surprised, but Maybe I just feel like I'm not gonna like it. But we'll see. Really? Okay, because I'll be honest, I was not trying to be mean yeah, when I, I picked know. this. I, know, I wasn't. I know, like I, I, know. I, I will say this. I was, I was just like scrolling through like my like music app on my computer. I was like, oh, here's this album. I was like, oh yeah, and and I have the vinyl for it too. Why can't I pick this? Yeah, this would be good. You know. Okay, I'm not I'm not that negative. Maybe I'm coming off too negative. I think I'm you're not, coming off I'm too negative. I'm a little negative. uncertain. I'll say that. I think, and I'm I think a little you're... slightly too negative, but we'll I, I see. think you're we'll fiend see. enough of my fiend words. After you know, I I, I just gave your album choice four out of ten. But uh, <laughs> I, I'm hopeful. Maybe you know, I think this is more neutral. I, I think you'll definitely like it. Maybe than my last pick, but well, we'll see. We'll see if we agree we'll or see. disagree. You know, we'll, we'll see we in the next see. episode. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I think that's pretty much it for this episode, guys. Um, as Mateo mentioned, we'll be reviewing Mollusk by Ween in the next episode. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks for listening to our album review of A Moon Shaped Pool by Radiohead. And uh, thanks for listening, guys, for you know uh, keeping up with the podcast. Hopefully, this is if this is your first episode, go back and listen to the rest of the fiending we've done in the past. Yeah. That's all uh, our ox fiends. I mean, hey, guys, again. I know my co-host Rashad just said it, but really, thank you guys for listening and supporting or anything and following along with our good and bad music <laughs> takes, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and we all know which ones are good and bad, yeah. right? I, I got mean, all the good ones, on. you got all the bad ones. So. All right, all right. Typical, uh, typical fiend material. Fiend material. Save some stuff for the next episode. Of course, of course. Of course. And uh, that next episode is where we'll see you guys next. Um, until then... Uh, just have a great time and yeah. keep listening to yeah, I think we're rambling enough. Catch you guys later. See Thanks. you guys later.